witnesses the sins that we think are secret. That's what this thing is all about. In order to build the nation of Israel back, guess what? Believe it or not, it starts with strong marriages. It's called on the secret on the sins, on the secret sins. All right, and the bishop had touched um, a little bit on it at the end of his class. He had said it on the secret sins, on y'all out there with your secret sins. All right, all praises for that thing. All right, then, because a lot of people in Israel um, think they can hide, all right, or hide their sins from the Lord, um, to do it behind doors and under covers or whatever like that. Um, without them understanding, the Lord sees everything. All right, everything you do on a secret or in the open, the Lord on the seas, and an account is being written. All right, account is being written of on what you're do, on the doing. <clears throat> All right, now give me Romans on the 15 and 4 on the real quick. The book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. Read that. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. All right, so this Bible was written for our learning. So we got to go through the Bible. So we got to pick it up on uh, daily. <laughs> All right, every day, because uh, we wasn't born into this. All right, a lot of us. All right, and some, of, uh, all right some of us was on the bishop. On Bishop Kanai's kids, <laughs> he's been there for like 20 years. All y'all have been born into this. All right, a lot of us come into it on later in age, in our 20s, in our 30s, or 40s, or 50s. Yeah, I mean, so we got to go back and on a relearn our history. Yeah, because they teach us, all right, our history start in slavery, 1619. How were slaves, they brought y'all over here. And so this is what y'all are all about on the swinging on trees in Africa and on nothing else. So, but when you actually dig into the Bible, you find out I got a rich history. I got royalty in my history. On the down through my on lineage, I got King David, okay? on the King Solomon, on the Moses, and Saul, Paul. <laughs> You know what I mean? I got all these on the righteous people. Jesus Christ. Hey, Judah. All right. And you got a lot of on the royalty in your veins. So we got to start to live like that. All right. I want to read it again and read it all the way through. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So this, <laughs> all right, on so the, uh, on so the scriptures, so the scriptures on it should be your patience and your comfort. On so when you're going through things, all right, on so this class is going to cover uh, the brother who first came into the truth and the brother that's been in the truth on the battling along the way. Because uh, all of us is going to battle until Christ come. So that on the brother who first came into the truth, yes, a lot of your sins is going to fall off you quick. All right. And you hear the law on pork. You're going to be like, oh, wow. I can't eat pork no more. That's, ah, so I got to put that down. No problem. All right. The brother that's been in for five or 10 years, now you got secret sins or on the sins that it's just, you struggling with. Ah, I don't know how to get this off. All right, I give into it every time. I don't want nobody to hear about this. You know what I mean? So that right there too, so we gotta learn on how to put that away. All right, to mortify that, on to get over that. All right, go to Psalms on the 90 and eight. 
All right, I'm going to get it with you real quick. All right, and go ahead. The book of Psalms, chapter 90 and verse 8. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Uh-huh. Our secret sins. Our what? Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. So the Lord set our sins before us. Yes, on like I said, on some of them will fall off. Some of them is going to plague you until uh, the chariots come. All right, until you walking up to them gates and you scared to death or on you in the wilderness and the angels and Christ is there and you scared to death that, oh, wow. All right, I wonder if they know about this. They do. They know exactly about that. And we're going to go on to go into it as we get into the lesson, all right? Go to, um, go to Proverbs on the 28th, 13th. Real quick, Proverbs 28, 13. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. I'm a slow flipper of the Bible, man. I think it's my pages, Israel. All right. I want to read that. Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Hmm. Hmm. I know Bishop touched on it. Uh, the deacons constantly touch on it. The captains always touch on it. All right, if you cover your sins, or right, if you reach your spiritual ceiling and you um, just find yourself, I can't go further. All right, I'm not getting on greater wisdom. All right, why am I not progressing in the truth? God is saying it here in this scripture, Proverbs 28 and on 13. Read it again. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. If you hide your sins, or if you want to keep your sins secret, you're not going to prosper. All right, you're not going to get ahead. It's easy coming into the truth and you're like, oh, and on you confessing left and right. I, honestly, I used to eat pork. <laughs> That's easy. I didn't have friends on your... I, See, you didn't have fringes on your clothes. But once it get on a deeper, now I got this on a girlfriend in the Bible. So I, to, I want to make her my wife. You know I mean? But I'm not ready for that. So you want to string that along for like a year. I'm not going to tell the officers or the captains them, though. Or, hey, um... Or the older brothers who, who want to been in for, I mean, three, five, on the seven, on the ten years. I've been smoking weed this whole time. I've been fornicating on committing adultery. Now you don't want to confess that. Why? So, so they might look at me. All right, I might get embarrassed. You got secret sins, yeah, that you need to confess. And you wonder why that you're not going past the level that you're at. And you've been in the truth for eight to ten years and you just at that level. Yeah, because the Most High says, I want to read it again. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Read. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. But whoso confesseth Confessive and forsake of them shall have mercy. You know what you deal with. You know what you battle with. Um, don't you know your own selves? Oh, give me that in Corinthians where Paul said it. Don't you know your own self? How are you going to hide that? All right, yes. On um, who are we? We're just, I mean, man on flesh and blood. All right, I'm an officer, and we got captains and deacons and bishops. Yes, on, on, you can hide it from us. Guess who you can't hide it from? Your angel that's watching you. God who's watching you. On, read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Read. Prove your own selves. You got to prove your own self. 
Are you worthy for the kingdom? Are you worthy for Christ on the dying on the cross for you? He came and shed his blood and died a worse on the death uh, than you can imagine. Skin ripped from his bones, hung on a cross, bloody, a throne of, um, so a crown of thorns on his head. Are you worthy for that sacrifice? Read. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Read. Prove your own selves. Read. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you. Don't you know, um, don't you know that Jesus Christ is supposed to be in you? And on what example did he set? Our Lord and Savior. We so quick to be like, I believe. I'm a follower of Christ. Israel united in Christ. He set that example. So we're supposed to follow it. I want to read on. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Except you be a reprobate. Reprobate. Except you be the brother who been listening to class after class, daily bread after daily bread, Sabbath class, high holy day class, after class, and you're not learning nothing. You're not applying nothing the scriptures is saying. How do you think the most high is going to talk to you? All right, a lot of people who hide on the secret sins, so they hear the classes, but they're waiting on Christ or the most high to say um, personally, hey, I know what you're doing. <laughs> so when it's a class about the adulterer and you're in adultery, it's about you. And the Most High is talking to you. Or right, if it's a class about smoking weed and you're smoking weed, it's about you. If you're a liar, a fornicator, <laughs> a murderer, and it's a class on that, it's talking about you from the Most High. So back to that point, All right, Christ has set that example. Give me that in 1 Peter 2 and 21. Two from the hip. Yeah. Right. So we're supposed to be following our Messiah. So we're supposed to do what he did. He came to this earth and he mortified his sins. He, ah, no, I'm not finna give in to that. All right, I got a purpose. I'm finna come here and set this as an example for my people so they know it is possible that you can overcome your sins. So that's why in you know, Matthew 5 and 48, it says on the, on the be ye perfect. Christian church got your mind though and say, ah, I can't be perfect. I don't know how to be perfect. You are able to be perfect if you keep God's laws. I'm to read that. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Read. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. Uh-huh. Leaving us an example. Christ has suffered for us. He laid his life on the line on the for us, on the leaving us an example. What's an example? I mean, what is an example? Something said on the before you go through it so that you on the know the right way to go. Oh, um, shoot on on. Every time you type in an address, oh, shit, I don't know how to get to this um, address. I got a doctor's appointment. I don't know how to get there. GPS, you could type in the address and be like, oh, on the, hey, on the Google said, on the take on the this right. So they understand this is how you get to that appointment. That's an example. All right. So Christ had on laid the GPS on the down for us in the scriptures to say, uh, this is how you live a perfect life. Are you going to be tempted? Yes. On was he tempted? Of course. Um, but he didn't give in to that temptation. On read on. For even hereunto were ye called, mm -hmm. because Christ also suffered for us, 
leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Read. Who did no sin. Who did on a, on a some sin. Who did no sin. Who had on a secret sin. Who did no sin. Read. Neither was guile found in his mouth. He didn't even talk bad about the people killing him. He didn't even talk bad. He was like, nah, that's guile. He understood his purpose. He understood why he's here. I got a job to do. We got a job to do. We have to follow on the Christ's footsteps. So you don't think the forefathers went through things? Yeah, take Paul. Hold on, give me where on the Paul had on the went to the Lord on the three times. <laughs> Hold on, what's that? On the Second Corinthians 12. He went to the Lord three times and he besought the Lord. He was like, Lord, help me. <laughs> on the, could he have kept it on the secret? Of course. He was like, hey, man, I'm Paul. All right, I was on the knocked off the horse and on Christ had taught me himself. I could keep this all secret. He put it out there. I'm struggling. I'm battling. So you see the examples. Read that 12 and 8, I believe. Oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice. He besought the Lord how many times? I besought the Lord thrice. For this thing, on the Paul dealt with lasciviousness, on the wicked, on the sexual sins. He grew up in Rome. At that time, uh, all type of wicked sins was going on, all type of fornications and just openly wicked sins. And at that he was rich. He, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was wealthy. So he was actually able to partake in everything on at his fingertips. He was, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then he came into the knowledge and was like, dang, I can't be doing that no more. Uh, but he was still plagued. So he went to the Lord three times. On what did he say? For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from Start me. Start at seven. Read um, seven. Seven. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse seven. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh y'all see yeah that you're gonna have on a something throughout your life so so that you don't get too high-minded so that you don't get too proud about yourself that you don't say hey on a look at me and don't look at christ or the most high read the messenger of satan the messenger of satan always gonna be there over your shoulder uh, so they got the uh, the little cartoons on with the angel and the devil on each shoulder. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to have on a something within you that say, hey, don't forget. You still deal with this. I'm still here. So don't say, hey, I overcame all of this. Are you sure? I don't smoke weed no more. I don't got a problem with smoking weed. <laughs> All right, you could be on the driving through traffic and a whiff hit you, and now that old spirit come back. Don't say that. On the Lord's will, you don't deal with that no more. Lord's will on the read. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, uh -huh. lest I should be exalted above measure. All right, unless I get too high-minded, read. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice. Three times, read. That it might depart from me. That it might leave me. Ah, Lord. And if you in that spirit, Lord, please take it away. All right, a lot of our people not in that spirit. All right, a lot of our people give in on a willingly. They like, nah. I know all them other laws, the, uh, the fringes and uh, on the pork and all that. No, that's easy. I don't have to do that. But this law, that's going to be tough. Yeah. All right. Of course, hey, 
hey, man, I got a beard on my face. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I can show I'm an Israelite. But it's something in the background that you saying, nah, don't nobody else see what I'm doing. How about porn? Hmm, it's a big one. Porn is a big one. Huge industry. Brothers go home and I'm single and uh, I don't have a wife. And they start, uh, the devil start playing. Pow, pow. Now you is clicking on sites that you're not supposed to be clicking on. I mean, doing things that you're not supposed to be doing. Um, so Bishop said, uh, uh, the back page website or something like that, that's all you on go to? Shea, no? You don't know? That best say, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, on the good answer. <laughs> on the good answer, that best say, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I check that brother's phone. But um, <laughs> yeah, how about that? That don't nobody else see what you're doing at the crib. It's easy to show face on the Sabbath. I'm an Israelite of Israelites. You see my beard? I, I even comb my beard on the Sabbath. You don't comb your beard all week except for the Sabbath. <laughs> Come on. I want to read on. I'm verse, verse 9. Verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is is made perfect in weakness. Wow. So the Lord said, no, nah, Paul, I'm not going to take that away. Yeah. Hey, on, you put it out there. You put it out there that you deal with that. But I'm still not going to take it away. Why? Because my grace is made on a sufficient, I mean, for you. So what the Most High gave us, it should be hard enough to get us through. You shouldn't have to go backwards. I gotta, I just can't yeah, contain. You should be able to contain. Why not? You start making excuse after excuse. Well, it's society. It's all the TV shows. It's on Netflix. Um, cut off Netflix. Um, cancel your subscription. All right, if you finding yourself on the falling over different things, I cut it off. On the Christ said it, on the give me that, in Matthew, I believe, on where he said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. All right, if it's the, uh, the internet, cut it off. The hell you need the internet for? Come to, um, come to the school. <laughs> I need it for the class. Well, then come to the school. Well, it's an hour away. Some brothers drive too. I don't read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. On, on whatever it is, God, that you feel that I have to keep this secret. I can't. Uh, I just got to keep on giving in and giving in. You're not going to get to the kingdom. I mean, Christ had gave you instructions to cut it off. Cut it off. Oh, so I'm just so covetous. Should I got to buy all these on the sneakers that everybody else got off of Amazon? Cut it off. Cancel your, cancel your subscription. Save your money. And don't do something else on a profitable for that. You could be the flyest officer in Israel on the high holy day. Not even on the high holy days. It's the uh, the family days on where we get together in regular clothes. <laughs> Damn, I better got some fresh Jordans. You know we wear the same uniform on the Sabbath, on the high holy days. Everybody look exactly the same. But you on that high holy day going to be fresher than everybody. You're wasting, you're wasting your money. Or to buy a house on get land. On read on. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So on whatever it is that's holding you back, 
so that you're trying to keep secret, uh, the most I say, cut that thing off so that you can get to the kingdom of God. Give me Isaiah on the 59. Start at verse 1. Let me get it. I want to read it when you get it. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened uh -huh. that it cannot save. Read. So, hold, hold on. So our people to think uh, uh, that the most high ain't up there watching. Uh, that he ain't listening uh, to what's going on or seeing what's going on uh, today. So they feel comfortable with, oh, shoot, I, I don't have to do everything the Bible say. I can keep this right here. I'm secret. I want to read it again. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. That it cannot hear. Uh, the Most High sees everything you do. Everything. Everything you do, he sees an account is being recorded of it. Read. Verse 2. But your iniquities. But your iniquities or sins, what? Have separated between you and your God. Have separated you. Have cut you off. Have made you hit a ceiling in this walk. That you cannot grow on the thereby. I mean, why ain't I gaining wisdom like that, brother? Do you really got to ask that question? Do you really got to ask, why am I not growing like on such and such? Such and such is probably not hiding those sins from the most high. He's probably doing what he's supposed to do on the, but you're so comfortable now uh, that you done hit it for so long that now you're not even on gaining wisdom no more. Go to on the Job 24. So let's get an example. Let's get an example in the scriptures. 24, um, let me get it real quick. Start at 14. The book of Job, chapter 24 and verse 14. The murderer rising with the light killeth the poor uh -huh. and needy. And in the night is as a thief. Uh, all right, so the thief. All right, the murderer on the rises early, and he kills. All right, the murderer just ain't going out there in the open. He, he want to kill secrets so he can kind of get away with it. On the, just like the thief. All right, the thief will on a sneak, creep. <laughs> uh, they call it creep in the 90s. I'm, uh, I'm an early 80s baby. Creeping. You want to creep in the houses. And steal on us, so don't nobody know that you was there. Read. The eye also of the adulterer waited for the twilight. The adulterer. You wait till sundown. Sun going down. Now you, you want to creep out the house, want to give your wife an excuse. Babe, I just got to run over here. And, and I know it's wicked. Some brothers even give the excuse, babe. I'm going to go do the work of the Lord, man. We going to camp or I'm going to the school. Yeah, but you know you finna go creep <laughs> at twilight to go commit your adultery. Read. The eye also of the adulterer waited for the twilight, uh -huh. saying, no eye shall see me and disguising his face. No eye is going to, ain't nobody going to see me. <laughs> I'm going to tent my windows. <laughs> I might even take the other car. I'm going to disguise my face. All right, I'm not going to comb my beard all the way out. I'm going to do my hair a different way. I'm going to put on different clothes. Ain't nobody going to see me read. Verse 16. In the dark, they dig through houses. In the dark, you want to hide your sins and you dig through houses. Read. Which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. See, they go past it in the daytime. Yeah, all right, on later on, ain't nobody going to see me doing this right here. So later on, I'm going to come through again. Read. They know not the light. They don't know the light. You are a child of darkness. Why? Because you're kind of hide. And we see it time and time again. 
of the backdoor marriages. You get the counsel. You come to the table. You ask for help, and then you know exactly what you're going to do at the end of it. So in the daytime, you like, hey, I'm Israel. I need help. I don't know what to do. But in the night, you know exactly what you're going to do. Why do you even come up here in the first place? Why do you even stand in front of the leadership and I don't want that counsel? You know what you're about to do. That's wicked as hell. Knowing you got secret sin. And guess what? Secret sins, it ain't secret. It's going to come to light in this life or on when you stand in front of the most high. It's not secret. It's going to be found out. All right? On really quick, I'm going to go to Proverbs on the 7 and 7. All right, another example. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 7. And beheld among the simple ones. Hold on, hold on, bro. Dang, you. But y'all... I'll take that seven seconds. Seriously, read that. And beheld among the simple ones. I discern among, among the who? Among the simple ones. Simple. Simps. We hear it every week. Simps on don't be a simp. Do a simp. Simp, simp, simp. All right, amongst the simple ones. So this brother is about to give you an example of a simple one. Read. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding. A young man on the void of understanding. So we don't know how old he is, uh, but the Most High called him a young man. Because uh, if you is a simp and you hide in sins and on, you want to keep everything in secret, you a young man. You ain't aged in this walk. So when you're supposed to be in it, you know I mean, 15 years, you know I mean, but you're doing simple things, you a young man. You ain't aged at all. Read. Verse 8. Passing through the street near her corner. Uh-huh. And he went the way to her house. So this brother right here passing through the streets, and he see a woman who called after him, and he went. He bit. Ah, I'm simple as hell. She got him. Read. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. See that right there? In the twilight. Choosing, hey, I can hide. All right, ain't nobody going to see me. Uh, don't nobody want to know I belong to IUIC. I'm an Israelite. Simple as hell and, and your understanding. I mean, thinking that you could get away with something. Read. And behold, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. On the hold that, give me Sirach on the 23 and 19. All right, on, on, so that brother right there got caught up on a fornication or adultery. He got caught up. I mean, thinking that he can be on subtle. He can be sneaky. He can hide his sins. But he don't understand the scriptures on it. Because if he did, um, he would understand this scripture right here. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 23, verse 19. Read. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. Such a man only worries about being seen. Simple brother only is creeping through. <laughs> I mean, looking on left to right, he know what he about to go do. He know he about to go commit wrong, sin. Ah, but you only fear the eyes of, I hope leadership don't see, or somebody else in the congregation don't see. I want to read it again. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. Read. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are, are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. The eyes of the Lord is 10,000 times as bright as the sun. At 12 p.m., at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., he looking at you like it's high noon. Sun shining on your forehead. 
You in a dead sweat. You outline everything clear 10,000 times. But this brother so simple that he think he can sneak and keep it secret. Really? I'm about to go into some examples of our forefathers and mothers who thought, oh, I could just do this and keep it secret. I'm going to get away with it. It wound up causing their death and the death of a lot of people. Same thing today. You call yourself an Israelite. You're supposed to be setting that example. You, you even go and you want to try to teach people who they are. And the people even look up to you. I mean, but then you come out and your sin is revealed and people are destroyed uh, behind that thing. You will be held accountable for that. On read on. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. All right, is that all on that? No, sir. Read. Beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. <laughs> the Lord beholds all the ways of men. He knew you before he created you. And now he looking at you like this nigga. Chance after chance. Class after class. All you got to do is apply and get it right. Follow. It's not hard. So you know what's hard on the Captain Shemaya or the Atlanta said it. It's hard to commit sin. It's hard to on the stay in sin and keep it secret. I mean, think about on what we just read on the sneak in that twilight, on lying to your wife. All right, hoping that you're not seen on a checking over your shoulder at every turn. That's, is it worth it? <laughs> is it not easier to, I'm going to love my wife? All right, if it's not good, I'm going to figure it out. I'll get counsel. It's hard to be a weed smoker. It's not easy. You got to meet up with the drug man. You got to um, go to the store and buy the um, on the blunts, on the roll them up. And now you smoking and now you smell like weed everywhere you go. People look and now you paranoid. <laughs> paranoid everywhere you go. It's hard to stay in sin. It's easy to do what's right. On it. That's why God said in 1 John, give me 1 John on the 5 and 3. It's not grievous. All right, keeping God's on the laws on it should make you feel, wow, okay, this is easy. I got a purpose. All right, I'm standing up for my people. I'm a leader. I want to read that. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. Read. That we keep his commandments. Uh-huh. And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not hard to do. It's hard to stay in your sin. No, it's easy to fall. It's easy to fall. Hard right, if you're not careful, hard right, on being vigilant and being watchful and being studied, it's easy for you to go off. I mean, but for you to stay in that state, you have to do work. Yeah, now you hiding it from everybody. Oh, you feel like every single class is about you. I know it's a lot of people out there even looking at this thinking like, damn, why was David teaching about me? I am. I am. <laughs> and I hope you feel like that. To repentance so that you can stop. Stop trying to hide it from the Lord. All right, I might not know you personally, but the Lord he knows you personally. Okay, go back. Um, so where I leave off? Uh, you want me to hold Proverbs 7? So did you finish in Sirach 23, 19? Yes, sir. Okay, go to Proverbs 15, 3. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Did it say some places? 
The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Read. Beholding the evil and the good. Yeah. At the hotel, at the drug spot, at the tattoo parlor, at the at every place. It sees the good, he sees the good and the evil. There's no secret. Yes, on you can hide it from us, but like on we're not even searching for stuff against the congregation. All right, if you talk to the bishop, the bishop won't be like, no, I didn't want to go out and search for this. Or right, if you talk to the deacons and the captains, I wasn't searching for nothing. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm over on the captains will always be like, I'm over all these schools. I got all these things to do. The deacons and the bishop, they're not searching. But it it is brought forth. On on why is that? On give me that in Ecclesiastes, I believe, 10, what is it, 1020? I believe. Uh yeah, on the 1020, Ecclesiastes 1020. It is brought to the attention of the leadership. Ain't nobody searching you out. How the Lord is showing you that the scriptures is 100%. You cannot hide from the eyes of the Lord. He is in every place. I'm to read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 20. Curse not the king. Uh-huh. No, not in thy thought. And curse not the rich in read. thy bedchamber. Read. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. So... I want to read it again, and then I want the part, I believe it's the third part. I want to read that. Curse not the king. So don't curse the king. So don't be whispering or murmuring. Read. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice. Because the bird of the air will carry your sin. He sees it. So the Lord will put that um, on the thought <laughs> And the bird of the air in it to carry it back. Somebody gonna come back and see you at that stoplight on the way. That wasn't his wife. I mean, what that brother doing over here? He shouldn't be here. Oh, I heard this brother or that sister say this. I mean, why do they say that? They murmuring. I need to bring that forth. So your sin will be brought out. So that's why week after week after week you hear on person put out. So I don't have no communication with them or them. You hear it every single week. Because uh, the Lord will bring that forth because he sees it. All right, then go to 1 Peter 3 and 12. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, uh -huh. and his ears are open unto their prayers. Read. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. But, um, so on, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Yeah, but the face of the Lord is against them who do evil. All right, it's a purpose why you came in here. All right, many is called and few is chosen. All right, and you want to be a part of the chosen. So you want to come into this walk and get yourself right. It is profitless to come in and sit here every week in sin, knowingly in sin, and you continue along that path on the thinking, it's not going to catch up to you. It's going to catch up to you. It's going to on the be brought forth. Some out in the open, in front of everybody, so the others 
on Will Fear as an example. Some, he'll just be put out the body in secret, hey, I'm going to go over there and, and I'll learn online. But it is profitless to keep sinning willfully. Give me that in Hebrews. So you come here and you know you is sinning. You know every week, every class on the seem like it's about you. Dang. And on now you building up a hatred uh, against the leadership, thinking the leadership talking uh, directly to me. That's the Lord speaking to you, saying, stop on doing what you're doing. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. So, so some brothers be here year after year, feast day after feast day, receiving the knowledge, getting the prophecies, all the great teaching, but you continually willfully sin. Read. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. You are saying to Christ himself, I mean, what you did for me, nah, it's not good enough. I don't accept that. So his sacrifice, it don't apply to you. Why? Because you're choosing. You're choosing to do what you do. You're choosing to stay in the way that you are. Read. But a certain fearful looking, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. On real quick, on give me Joshua 7 and 10. I'm going to get into the history real quick, and then I'm going to get into the solutions. All right, on how do we on come back? All right, how do we stop? <laughs> All right, All right if you've been here long enough, you should already know these solutions, but the younger ones, they probably don't. Uh, but we all need to hear, okay, if I'm dealing with that and I, you know what I mean, uh, this is what you're supposed to do. Want to read that. Joshua, chapter 7, verse 10. Hold on. Let me get it. Let me see where I want to start at real quick. Uh, okay, read that, 7 and 10. Joshua, Joshua, chapter 7, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? All right, so a little bit of part of the backstory on Israel had went to war, all right, um, but they had got on um, the kill. Like a lot of people got to kill. Jump up to, let me see if I can find it. So they went to war against the Amorites. Uh, I can't find it. Um, but like thousands, all right, um, thousands of the brothers got killed because uh, uh, one brother wanted to be in sin and disobey on what the Most High said. So they came back on to the camp, and Joshua was distraught. He was like, man, all right, and why are we getting killed like this? All right, because at this time, to them, we was listening to God and actually following. On the following what we're supposed to do. Yeah, uh, is it three? Seven? It's three. On read three then. Joshua chapter seven, verse three. And they returned, yeah. and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, uh -huh. and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, uh -huh. and they fled before the men of Ai. Read. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and, thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate. All right, so on the thirty-six men. All right, on my bad, on 36 men got killed. Gosh, hey, on, that was a big thing, y'all, because one should chase a thousand, all right, on the two should chase a thousand or whatever. On, but we were so powerful that if 36 of us got killed, it was a huge deal. All right, on the jump back to where we had on the start of that in verse, all right, what is it, eight? Or 10, 10, 10, 10, yep. 
Joshua chapter 7, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? So Joshua was distraught. He was like, man, but this suck right here, man. We just got smoke. All right, read. Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. So God said, hey, on y'all sinned. All right, y'all is on a dwelling in sin right now. All right, now somebody amongst you, you ain't listened to what I told you to do. Read. For they have even taken of the accursed thing. You, all right, I told y'all not to take nothing accursed. And you did. Read. And have also stolen and disassembled also. Read. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Read. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. You could not stand on before your enemies. All right, the weakness of Israel is sin. So when you sin, you, you make the nation weaker. Okay, that's why we're in captivity today. So oh, the way to change that is to stop sinning. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> So we could get stronger. Read. But turn their backs before their enemies uh -huh. because they were accursed. Read. Neither will I be with you anymore except ye destroy the accursed from you, from among you. So God had told Joshua, Hard, unless you want to destroy this accursed thing on whoever, on the did what I tell them on the not to do. All right. I'm not going to be with y'all. Read. Verse 13. Up. Oh, Sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Read. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O uh -huh. Israel. Uh -huh. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. Mm -hmm. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. Read. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come by man. So the Lord said, I'm going to line up all the tribes. All right, the, all right, the tribe, all right, I choose. I'm going to go to that tribe and choose the family. All right, and so we finna find out on who is trying to hide. I mean, secret sin amongst Israel on getting brothers killed. Now, I'm mean, jump down to the point. I want to get to the point now. Um, 19. Um, jump down to 18. Joshua jump chapter down to 17. Yeah, because this is the leader of the nation of Israel. I want to make this point on real quick. On the being from the, uh, the tribe of Benjamin, this is the big point. Joshua chapter 7, verse 17. <laughs> and he brought the family of Judah. Of who? And he brought the family of Judah. Read. And he took the family of the Zarhites. Of the Zarhites, of the tribe of Judah. Read. And he brought the family of the Zarhites, man by man. Uh huh. And Zabdi was taken. On the Zabdi from the tribe of Judah was taken. Read. Verse 18. And he brought his household by man by man. Man by man of the tribe of Judah. Read. And Akon. And who? And Akon. Uh-huh. The son of Carmi. On the, the Carmi of the tribe of Judah. Read. The son of Zabdi. The son of Zerah. Uh-huh. Of the tribe of Judah was taken. Uh-huh. And Joshua said unto Akon, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel. Uh-huh. And make confession unto him. And, and make what? And make confession unto him. And make confession. Sometimes, um, hard the leadership find out stuff, and you know, so they have to come to you and actually bring it forth on it so you can make a confession. Sometimes you lie, on it, sometimes you tell the truth. But secret sin was found out. Read. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Hide it not from me. You will get people killed. On why are we still dying at a riper race? On the rate, 
why are we still dying at a rapid rate? Because it's sin among sins in our nation, and God has to make examples out of people. Read. Verse 19, and Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I play thee. Oh, I'm verse 20. 20. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. Read. And thus and thus have I done. When so, I saw so on Achan, all right, all right, on after lives was lost, all right, after the damage was done, then on the Joshua had to question him, then he brought out his secret sin. Knowing from Jump Street he wasn't supposed to do what he on, on did. Y'all see that? It's a punishment behind that right there. On the read on. Verse 21. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, so they are. So his sin on was covetousness. He wanted that garment. He wanted them shekels. He wanted, hey, 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 I'm going to be fly. Knowing dang well you ain't going to be wear, wearing that garment amongst Israel. Where you going to wear that at? I mean, brothers got the same spirit on it today. They buy Jordan after Jordan after Jordan. Knowing dang well you ain't got nowhere to go to put that stuff on. You in a, what, at camp? You're not going to be wearing Jordans to camp. <laughs> at a flyer? No. No. At a high holy day, no. If on the, this is your life, you endure yourself in this life. You got time for all that covetousness. What? On the read. I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent. And he even tried to hide the things he took. I'm going to keep that secret too. Read. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Jump down to 24 to see the judgment. Verse 24. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah. So they took him on Achan. Read. And the silver. And, and the, the silver. And the garment. The garment. And the wedge of gold. The gold. And his sons. And his children. And his daughters. Your daughters. And his oxen. Your ox, your animals. And his asses. Your asses, your donkeys, and what else? And his sheep. Your sheep. And his tent. Even your tent. <laughs> Read. And all that he had. Everything this brother has. What? And they brought them unto the valley of Accor. Read. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? Why did you do this to us? I mean, why did you bring this folly to Israel? Read. The Lord shall trouble thee this day. The Lord going to trouble you. Do you want to keep that secret? Do you want to go against the Lord? Do you want to do your own thing? All right, the Lord going to trouble you. Read. And all Israel stoned him with stones. Stone him to death. Read. And burned them with fire. Not even stone them. Only stone them. Burn them up. Tent, clothes, oxen, sons, daughters, everything he got, burn it. Read. After they had stoned them with stones, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. And on, on, put up a great heap of stones as an example to Israel. So when y'all see this right here, you don't do after Akon. You don't go against the on the Lord's word and try to hide your sins. On um, give me Romans six twenty three. On um, what is the wages uh, that you will have to pay? All right, if you don't want to get right, it's a price that you will have to pay. It's a price out there. Yeah, you know I mean, in this life, like I said, or the next, you will have to pay that thing. All right, on um, when you're standing in front of the Most High. You might even get through this life. Oh, shoot, I made it. Shoot, hey, I died or whatever. I got, hey, I had this secret sin. 
I mean, but I wasn't judged in this life. You're going to be judged I mean, when you stand in front of the Most High God. Don't read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, uh -huh. but the gift of God is eternal life. So the wages of sin is death. That's the price that you got to pay if you don't want to change. Hold on, go to Mark on the 4 and 22. Simply put, it ain't anything hid from God. He knows it all. He created it. Um, so when Esau has a, um, a thing called coincidences. Oh, so that just happened. No, it did not just happen. On, on read that. The book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 22. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret. Oh, wow. I want to read that again. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret. Uh huh. But that it should come abroad. There ain't anything hid that it should not come to light. He sees it. All right, if we don't catch it, he sees it. You will have to pay a penalty for that. On read on. If any man have ears, let him hear. If you have a little bit of understanding, understand. If you have a little bit of wisdom, understand that the Most High is the judge. So if he wanted to come to light, it will come to light. If he don't and he want to judge you himself, all right. Go to on the Jeremiah on the 23, 24. Jeremiah 23, 24. We're almost done, Israel. We're almost done. We got a couple more scriptures. 23, 24. Jeremiah, Jeremiah. chapter 23, verse 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Y'all see that? Can you hide in a secret place? Can you do anything in secret uh, that God won't want to know what you're doing? You cannot read. Say of the Lord, do not I Jump feel... up to 23. I want to read 23. Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 23. Am I a God at hand? Am I a God at hand? Read. Say of the Lord, and not a God after all, afar off. Afar off. I mean, God ain't afar off. He didn't leave us. He watching us. He didn't just uh, know the Israelites... Uh, all right, I know I put my name on them, but they're going to be over. No, he's watching exactly what we're doing on read. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, say of the Lord? Read. Do not I feel heaven and earth? Read. Say of the Lord. I feel heaven and earth. There ain't a place on in heaven or in earth on on where you can go that he ain't there. Yes, uh, the white man is on the still discovering places in the sea and, and on the stuff like that in the uh on the rainforest and stuff like that. But on the God has already known on what is dead. So you cannot go there and say, I'ma hide, I'ma keep this secret. It ain't nothing secret under this earth. All right. Go to Proverbs 1 and 25. So we're going to get into, okay, on how, how do we on get help or how do we on a change from on hiding it to bringing it out? All right, and letting it be known on a getting on a better healing yourself. Okay, read that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 25. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. Uh-huh. And with none of my reproof. So God said that you said it not all heart of my counsel. Heart, if you've been in this truth for like a couple weeks or on the 10 to 15 years, you've been hearing the counsel. Heart, a lot of people come in saying, hey, I've been listening for a year. I've been listening for two years. So you've been hearing the classes. I mean, why do you think the classes is for? So we can better ourselves on it. So we can... 
I want to go through the scriptures and heal ourselves. All right, it's for our on the well-being. All right, if you've been in this thing for 10 years, you done been through every scripture in this Bible. All right, it ain't going to be a secret scripture that come out where you'd be like, oh, wow, after 15 years, I get it. No, you have the healing. All right, and you have on what you're supposed to do, on the thou shall not steal, on the thou shall not commit adultery, kill. I mean, but you're choosing. So you have to choose to follow God's counsel now. All right, I'm going to read that again. Verse 25. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, uh -huh. and with none of my reproof. And none of God's correction. On the God's corrections, on the comes... All right, a lot of times on through the leadership. Yes, on the he on the can step in, uh, but you don't want him to step in. All right, how does God step in? A car accident, a death. All right, all these um I mean on the bad things that happen. All right, the leadership step in on the for God and say, hey, all right, don't listen online on the for on the three months, on the six months a year, and on the then we'll I want to bring you back once you get yourself together. Ain't nobody putting hands on you. Ain't nobody on hurting you. All right. Or you might be separated on it, but you'll have a point of contact. Yeah. All right. On. Is it hard? Yeah. But you will better yourself I mean, from bringing that thing forward. Um, go to Proverbs 11 and 14. Almost done, Israel. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, where no counsel is, the people fall, uh -huh. but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. All right, and when you don't have any counsel, you're going to fall. All right, and you're thinking that you know better. So that's why you want to keep your sins secret, because uh, you think that you got the way. Oh, so I could do this right here. And ain't nobody ever going to know on it, so I could just keep it on the side. You're going to fall. Okay, you're going to fail. On Why aren't you progressing? Because you're not on getting over yourself. All right, on getting better, getting help. Go to Sirach on the 21 and 1. Almost done. I sound like Bishop from last night, right? <laughs> we almost there, Israel. We almost there. I know. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 1. My son, hast thou sinned? Uh-huh. Do so no more. That's the counsel from God. All right, if you're in sin, stop it. Stop sinning. So you'll see a change in your life. All right, the most high will start to deal with you again. On the wisdom, don't deal with the corrupt. You will only go so far. On why ain't your teaching improving? Why ain't all of these things happening for you? Because you can only go so far on the when you're in sin. On read it again. My son, has thou sinned? Do so no more. Uh huh. But ask pardon for thy former sin. Ask pardon. Repent. I'm mean, go to the Lord. Ask for repentance. Say I'm I'm tired of living it's hard it's hard to stay in sin easy to follow the commandments read flee from sin as from the face of a serpent read for if thou comest too near it it will bite thee the teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion uh -huh. slaying the souls of men stop slaying your soul it's hurting your soul all right it's not benefiting you oh um, you're not getting better and in this truth you're either getting better or you're getting worse. That's the only two choices you got. And on the way you're in sin, you're not getting no better. You're not getting better. So you're going to slowly start to see yourself on the decline. Go to Acts on the 319. And then Romans 6 and 12. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent. Ye therefore, and be converted. So it's finally time um, to repent. All right, it took the lead apostle three years of walking on with the Messiah. 
he finally repented after uh, the prophecy came to fruition. You will betray me, Peter. And on once he finally seen it on the happen, he was like, wow, damn, I, I betrayed the Messiah. All right, I betrayed the Lord. And then he went wholeheartedly for the truth. So, I mean, it might take us a little longer. Some, yeah, a little sooner. I mean, but we have to fully repent I mean, during our walk. Read. Repent ye therefore and be converted uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out. Read. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So, on when the time of refreshing come from the Lord, on you don't want to be called in no secret sins. All right, and you want to be able to stand boldly and on the firmly and say, Lord, I did your, hey, I did what you told me to do. And I'm confident in that thing. Is it going to be? Hey, I'm like, shoot, I hope I did. But if you know you did, you know you did. You know I mean, but if you're hiding that secret sin, you're going to be up there shaking in your boots. I'm telling you. Go to Romans real quick. Romans 6 and 12. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. So don't let sin on the reign over you. Keep on continually. It's like it's a continual thing. You're on a willfully giving yourself over to it. It's raining on you. Read. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. In the lust. Because uh, you're giving yourself over to your lust. I want to do this. Or I want to do that. You are giving yourself wholeheartedly over to the devil. You are saying, ah, I don't have no self-control over this. I can't stop myself. Why not? On the day God say to discipline yourself? Yeah. On the mortify yourself? On the, ah, give me that. Mortify your members. Mortify yourself. Where is that at? Uh, Colossians 3, 5. Yep, you're right. Give me that Colossians 3, 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mortify therefore your members. You got to discipline yourself. All right, on this walk is about discipline. You got laws that you're supposed to keep. It's, it amazed me how we can on a stop at a stop sign or stop at a red light, yeah, but we can't keep God's laws. It amazes me how we could do what the white man say, but God said, nah, not all the way. You, you, you want to keep some stuff on the secret, uh, behind closed doors. Who's your God? Is it the God of this Bible or the God of this world? You have to mortify your men. I mean, members, read. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, mm -hmm. evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Mortify yourselves. On discipline yourselves. On Give me James 5 and 16. Just uh, three, four more scriptures. James chapter 5 verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. Confess your faults. We're not all there. <laughs> all right. Each and every one of us is dealing and we're battling through this walk. So we have on the counselors to go to, on the people set up who are right, above us on uh, where we could go. I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. Uh, but when you choose the Hey, I'm going to just do it on my own. So you're walking your own walk. On read. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. Read. That ye may be healed. That you may be healed. So the goal of this thing is to be healed. To get over yourself. To get into the kingdom of heaven. Go to, uh, I don't want that one. Go to 1 John on 1 and 9.
First John chapter one verse nine. If we confess our sins, uh -huh. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So the Most High is faithful. Heart, if you come to the Most High with a sincere heart and on confess your faults, on confess those secret sins, He is on going to forgive you. All right. Is there I mean, punishment behind that? Of course. Of course it is. You take your punishment and you grow thereby. You grow and go forward. Or right, if it's fornication or adultery, you grow on the front. You stop. You confess it. All right, but you got a counselor. All right, the scriptures say have one counselor of a thousand on somebody where you can go to and you know that person is going to be on your side. All right, um, so that person ain't partial. So they're going to judge you righteously according to the Bible. Yes, uh, the scriptures say don't have no company with fornication. I don't know, fornicators. So you'll be removed, but you'll be back. <laughs> All right, if you repent wholeheartedly, you stop doing that sin, and you follow the commandments of God. Read. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins uh -huh. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, I mean, but ultimately, the Most High will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You will step closer to getting to the kingdom of heaven. You will step closer to on stepping up to the plate again and battling the next thing that come your way. I got over that. Dang. Okay, cool. What's next? Study, 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 study. Trial. Don't give in. You're going to overcome that one. So that's the, uh, the battle uh, uh, that we've been on, the chosen to walk in this life. Um, two more scriptures on the Give Me Revelation uh, 21 and 7. Uh, Revelation 21, 7. Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh yeah, shall... He that what? He that overcometh. He that overcomes. He that overcomes. You have to, over, you have to overcome. Some sins, some transgressions, like I said in the beginning, is easy. Uh, the fringe is out. I got to get fringes on my clothes? No problem. Easy. I, I, all right, I got to put down the pork? Easy. But... There's going to be sins where you're going to have to work. You're going to have to battle every day that you wake up. Self-hate, lust, <laughs> pride. It's so many that our people was plagued with that every day that we on wake up, I mean, we're going to be battling through that. And the only thing that gets us through is these scriptures. That's it. Counsel. Finding healing, seeking healing through the word of God. I want to read it again. Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. You shall inherit all things. You will get the kingdom if you overcome. But if you subcome, <laughs> you just keep giving in and you're not on willing to work or try and you're willfully giving in. Don't even think that Christ and on what he did for you on what's for you. Nah, it don't apply to you. No, because uh, he did that for the righteous who want to want to get themselves in order. On the read. And I will be his God. And he will be our God, read. And he shall be my son. And you shall be on God's son. On last scripture, give me Ecclesiastes in the Bible, 12 and 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. All right, I pray y'all glean something from this class. All right, if you are dealing, I pray that you confess on, on bring it forth to get the healing. All right, so that we can get the uh, on the kingdom a little sooner. All right. All right, and read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh-huh. Fear God and keep his commandments. Uh-huh. 
For this is the whole duty of man. Read. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Uh Uh-huh. And every secret thing. Every what thing? And every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So God is going to bring every secret thing, whether it be good or evil, into the light. So it's our duty to follow this Bible to a T. All right? On with that, I'm going to say shalom, Israel, on Most High and Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.